show you how to prepare a file to print. So after you decide whether you want to cut or etch a design, you need to know if your design is a vector or a raster. The machine reads vectors as lines, while raster as pixels. Therefore, the vector, uh, when drawing a vector, you need to know that the, the lines itself are not more than 0.18 millimeters. And this can be done uh, when using a vector drawing software like uh, Illustrator, Inkscape, CorelDRAW, or even CAD programs like AutoCAD, uh, Rhino, or, or SolidWorks, and uh, which needs to be exported to DXF or SF, uh, SVG. So what the raster uh, is read as pixels, um, any line that is more than 0.18 millimeter will be read as a raster. And this is usually uh, used for etching. The darker the area, the more uh, power it uses. And if you want to uh, etch a design, you can use normal JPEG or BMP uh, for. And since it works like a normal printer, some machines have their own interface software to adjust the artwork for printing, while others can be sent directly from the program you're using. But now we're going to focus on the interface software for the Universal Laser Systems uh, machine. Before sending your file to print, you need to divide your artwork into different layers so we know which one you're going to cut, which lines are you going to engrave. So lines that will be cut are, are usually in red, which are the vector lines, while drawings that are etched uh, should be in black color. And what is in between can be in blue or green. So. Now, after you decide which uh, lines are going to cut or engrave, go to File, Print, and then you have the Printing Properties box. Make sure that you're using the, the right name for the printer, which is now we have the VLS 4.60. Uh, also, let's remind the right paper size, which uh, the one we have is 60 uh, uh, long with 45 uh, width. And then that remind whether you have a vector or a raster output. Also, make sure that you scale your artwork to one to one. So this is the uh, the VLS four point sixty interface software where you can uh, edit uh, or uh, relocate your designs uh, on the software. So here you have the name of the file the number of the page, so you can go back and forth to see what other uh, print jobs you've done before. This is the, the bed size, so this is the maximum, uh, the maximum printing size. And here you have your uh, artwork. Um, this is if you want to import or export uh, more designs. So here, you have all the print jobs you've done before with the names and titles. You can either select on them. And uh, if you press here, select, so we go back to the main, uh, main page. Uh, or you can export uh, this printing uh, job itself. Uh, so you can save it on your computer later on for reusing. Uh, or you can import uh, more files or delete them. So. After we send the artwork itself to the software, we need to relocate it exactly on where we want it on the printing bed. So we have the relocate button here, which we click on. So we can either relocate it manually with the control points and just drag it with the mouse, or we have the X and Y axes. So it's more like precise uh, location. You can also zoom in and out, which works with the mouse. So you right click to zoom in and uh, left click to zoom out. Here is the uh, focus location, the focus location button here. So, uh, and it scrolls around with the mouse so you know exactly where the lines are located in case you uh, want to make sure if uh, you are exactly on the right. Uh, the right uh, control point. Uh, always have in mind that you're trying to uh, not waste any materials. That's why it is very important to know where you are relocating uh, your uh, uh, your artwork. And it's always better to use it from the top and on the left, so you still have more space to print more stuff. 
And uh, so let's say we want to make more copies of these and instead of waiting for each and every print job to finish, we can just duplicate it here now with here, this duplicate button, um, which then uh, you can quantify how many copies you want to make horizontal and vertical. So here, let's say we, uh, you can go uh, with the, uh, whether you want uh, like uh, two copies or more and the displacement, like how far do you want them from each other. And after that, you click on apply. So here we decided that we only want one vertical uh, and uh, one horizontal, I mean, and the rest are on the Y axis with the statement of three millimeters and one millimeter uh, on the X axis. You can also hide uh, your duplicated designs. And after that, after we're done with how many pieces we want to print and we made sure that exactly in the same location we want, you click on settings. So here you have a material database where you can uh, choose the, the, the variety of the materials you're going to work on. So let's say here we're going to try with softwood. And then after that, we determine the thickness. So it knows like how deep uh, it can go or how, how much power and speed it wants. And here, you determine the right unit. And after that, you click on apply. So this is the manual control. Uh, you might not need the material database if you know the exact parameters you're going to cut or engrave with. Um, but it's also better to go to the material database. However, the material database is not always as precise, so that's why there's the manual control where you might do some adju adjustments. So the laser cutting machine has two main variables, which are the speed and power. Here you can see the power and the speed. Uh, so let's say if you want to cut, you'd require the maximum speed with least power. So it takes more time uh, for the laser to uh, etch through the material itself. Uh, while if you want to engrave, then it's vice versa. So it needs like uh, minimum power and more speed. Uh, and you can also like play around with uh, how deep you want to cut or how deep you want to engrave. Uh, so here you have the different layers that we talked about before, the red, blue and black. Um, with the determined power and speed according to the material database we chose from here. So power and speed, and this is uh, a pulse per inch, which determines how many uh, pulses the laser will cut through the material. And this is that axis, which is mostly the thickness of the material. So, uh, and here is the mode. So we choose whether this you want it uh, vector or raster, or you can even skip the layer itself. After you uh, adjust the power and speed, you click on set. Uh, here you can either load or save the parameters you have, so we won't always have to uh, go back and readjust the material, you can just easily save it. And after we adjusted our power and speed, we are ready to print. Uh, uh, this printer, it has uh, a USB, so you just plug the USB uh, and then you can uh, virtually turn on the machine when you have everything ready and don't forget to turn on your extractor fan and now you can click play and you're ready to print. Here this is what we've done with the laser cutter we have. So this is the, the bed size that we were talking about and this is where we adjusted our design. This is the laser cutting through and etching, and this is our final design, the Ice Sky Room Mock Coasters. This one, as you can see here, is a vector cut, so it's cut all the way through. Well, because this, it reads it as lines. This is vector engrave, which uh, is under the blue layer, while this is uh, black engraved, which is just as raster. 
And now we're done with the introduction to laser cutting. Uh, we have uploaded uh, on our site. Uh, this is from iSkyro Fab Lab. Thanks for watching.